it starts by knowing what's the legacy you want to leave. And once you know the legacy that you want to leave, you you should live every day with that in mind because it could be your last, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you're living every day like it's your last and you know the legacy that you want to leave and you're giving it your all and you're trusting God for that and to do that, there's nothing but good that can come from that, whether you're on this earth or not. Welcome back to the Culture and Legacy podcast, where we're talking about life behind the scenes as entrepreneurs and just talking about the reality of life behind the scenes before we go into business. And so today, I'm excited to have my friend, my mentor, and fellow photographer, videographer friend, Joshua Ferris, with me on the podcast. Josh, how you doing, man? What's going on? You doing all right? You're taking doing it one day at a time, Matthew. One day at a time, man. That's all we can do in these times, man. It's it's every day is different, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely, man. (laughs) I feel like different laws are being passed in our sleep about what we can do and where we can go. And it's, you know, it's, it's, it's wild. Coronavirus is, is really the hot topic, huh? Crazy. (laughs) Yes. But I'm excited that despite that, you know, we can get together and just have a little conversation about, about legacy and, you know, what that, what that really means uh, for us as entrepreneurs. So uh, for, for people who, who don't know you, why don't you share a little bit uh, with us, with the listeners on, on who Joshua Ferris is and what you do? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So my name is Joshua Ferris, um, co-owner here of Ferris Photos and Films with my wife, Karis Ferris. We are wedding photographers. We also uh, shoot a lot of films, create uh, films, videos for corporate businesses, ministries, artists. Um, we're, we're all things marketing. And then we also teach our fellow uh, photographers, how to grow their business, how to um, shoot better, hone their craft, um, make a living off of the gifts that God has given them. So we love our community of creatives um, who we tend to help. And then uh, also just our, our peers when it comes down to life and family and entrepreneurship. We love uh, our faith. We love family and we love entrepreneurship. That's big, man. Those are, you know, I, th- I think, for me, and that's even kind of, you know, the heart behind this podcast, you know, is just family entrepreneurship and just trying to create that balance and just, you know, not just not not putting for me, you know, not putting my family at risk or, or at harm or just neglected is a, is a better word for the sake of a few more extra dollars. Absolutely. Absolutely. So how does I guess, you know, jump into conversation. How does your family really drive your business? When it comes to family and business, to me, it's it's all in one. Uh, for those who don't know, me and Karis actually met at Baylor University. Um, Sick and Bears. That's absolutely. And that's where <laughs> we actually started the business. And cool. so me and Karis have grown up together, uh, literally, as well as figuratively, and we've built a business together. You know, so when it comes down to family, when it comes down to business, to me, they're intertwined because um, I do business with my family. I do mm-hmm. business to provide for my family. And so you have to play the line carefully with both of them and the balances that come with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's good. Cause I think, you know, putting more, more emphasis in one is definitely going to impact the other and, and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Do you think, so I guess having kind of the advantage or not advantage, maybe different perspective yeah. of, you know, not only are both you and your wife, Karis entrepreneurs, but you are entrepreneurs and have grown the business together from the start. Mm-hmm. Uh, how, how do you feel like that's kind of, uh, I guess, affected the way that you are a father and you are a husband? Because I know, it, you know, for you, for any entrepreneur, it doesn't just stop at 5 p.m. Like it, mm-hmm. it continues mm-hmm. through the night. And Absolutely. so how do you, I guess, how do you, how do you make that work? How do I make it work? Um, I have to continually observe, be in, uh, in sync with cares, right? So I have mm-hmm. to know that's on the wife side when it comes to and being and doing business as a husband and wife. There's times when I can be super duper focused on the business, um, but there's also times where I need to be super duper focused on Karis, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, because I can't 
necessarily be a hundred percent business and then no no husband i'm a husband first and then a businessman second right so um with that comes a lot of communication just sometimes asking cares hey how are you feeling where are you at and, and she'll let me know well i need more time or it may not be direct all the time that, but that's where you have to search for it and if you mm -hmm. are adamant about making sure she's your wife first or y'all are married first and then business partner second you know you'll do what's necessary to make sure that she's you know feeling cared for feeling prioritized um also you know she will like i just said she'll she'll let me know and i have to take responsibility take ownership of being her husband first before the business so that's just kind of the balance the fine line that you have to walk sometimes and sometimes you'll you'll have to put the business on the back burner right you know yeah. so you know I, even though i may want to just work till three o'clock or something in the morning sometimes i have to put it down and you know watch a show you know spend time <laughs> and make sure that she's good first yeah 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 that's that's good that's something that i you know, my wife she's she's an entrepreneur as well um and i've i've had her on the podcast she was actually my first person i, mm -hmm. I made sure mm -hmm. she was the first one <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, the, the thing we really talk about is, you know, being, being married to an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. um, but I know that a lot of people either aren't married at all or aren't married to an entrepreneur or just, you know, they don't even really con consider this. So whether you're, you know, a, a family man or not, uh, I still think that either way, it's so important to have vision for what you're doing, you know, whether mm -hmm. it's just you and you want your business to thrive and to succeed, you need to have a vision for where you want it to go. Mm -hmm. what, is, what, are some, what are some things, I know this is, this is, this is big for you, um, you know, legacy and, and having vision for every action you take, because um, I know, I know your, your background a little bit, you have mm -hmm. an engineering background, so you're, you're very, you know, whether it's, it's numbers or, you know, like me, if it's, it's not on the calendar, it doesn't exist. <laughs> that's right, that's right. It has to be on that calendar. <laughs> yeah. And so what kind of, what kind of practices would you say you kind of create in place for, for establishing a vision for where you want your business to go? Gotcha. Yeah. So when it comes to establishing a vision, some of the things that, uh, that I do or that I have done is take very intentional time to not only understand myself and what I want, but also my purpose, right? Mm -hmm. um, and a, a, a thing here is your purpose has been given to you, right? So you can, it's, it's, it's easy to find your purpose when you want to take your gifts, things that you're good at, things that your desires, and to add all those up and to pursue a goal but your purpose comes from outside of you so something that I do in order to make sure that my vision is always on the front of my mind is in the morning take time out to to, to pray to meditate to uh, get into scripture just to understand and learn my creator right just like mm -hmm. we have we take these photos we create these videos or whatever it may be we always have a purpose for them because we created them well mm -hmm. I didn't create myself so I try to go to, to my creator to understand my purpose and from there once I got that I take my gifts things that I'm good at my desires all of those and I try to align those things right and that's how I get to my vision and how I can keep it on the forefront of my mind and always have something to come back to when I feel like I'm out of control right because if you're not in control you're out of control so yeah. um, I use that as a as a, a compass to make sure that I'm always going towards uh the goal that we've set and the vision that we have mm -hmm. yeah you said you keep that as a as a compass to for for i guess you know your direction and i think that's a i think that's a, that's a great analogy i think a lot of entrepreneurs you know it's so easy to be driven by by money it's so mm -hmm. by by num by you know viewers or you know just just uh attention uh, I remember there was this this story um, a little while ago about this this Instagram influencer who, mm -hmm. I mean, she had, I mean, I don't know if I'm exaggerating, but she had like a lot of like hundreds of thousands, maybe tens of thousands of, of followers, and and um, she put out a like a 
like a t-shirt line or something yeah, yeah, yeah. and she sold like 25 shirts wow <laughs> and you know it kind of the kind of you know from her perspective it's like man i have thousands and thousands of followers and i can she couldn't even fulfill the minimum order to to get you know bulk shirts yeah yeah and you know from from my perspective it's like well for one maybe you just don't know your audience mm -hmm. and and two you just you didn't really lay down like a legitimate plan for you know how you're really going to push this out because if you had you know sat down a month two months ago and be like okay i want to release a t-shirt line now i need to start plugging you know some things that are that are on brand for this Absolutely. instead of instead of just oh people follow me and so they're gonna buy anything that i just put because out I say so yeah that doesn't yeah happen. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, I think as, as entrepreneurs, like it's so important to really sit down, really, you know, like you say, get to know, get to know your creator, get to know your purpose, mm -hmm. establish that vision, because once you've done that, then everything else kind of falls into place because it's all going back to that vision that you first, yeah. that you first established. I agree. I agree. Yeah. That's, that's so good. So you're also a father. <laughs> Father, two little yep. ones, huh? Ellie and JT, four yeah. and two. Four and two. Wow. So how has business changed from when it was just you and Karis to now mm -hmm. there's four of you? <laughs> um, it's gotten a little bit more serious, right? <laughs> <laughs> when you got kids uh, and kids to feed and, and to clothe and all that, you take it a little bit more serious. Um, mm -hmm. I remember... <laughs> before Ellie was born, I said, I had a bit, I was like, with every kid, I want to level up. I want to either start another business or take hmm. the business to the next level. And God has really done that with every business or every child that we've had. We've, we've leveled up and have grown um, because yeah, I, I don't, I just think having children, having more responsibility as a man does something to me to makes makes that makes me want to do more. So um, it having children has made me go harder in business and made me go harder for my family to be able to um, hopefully and try to guarantee, you know, as much of their security as I can. So I just feel like that's my job. That's my role to provide for them, um, to protect them and show them, you know, what a man is supposed to do. That's cool. And, and I think also like you're able to, almost physically see what it's like to leave a legacy because you see who you're passing on what you're oh, doing yeah. to, right? Yeah. When it comes to legacy, man, it's, it's top and bottom, right? So in order to know how to leave a legacy, you've, you need to have an example of somebody leaving a legacy, right? Mm -hmm. So me and Karis, we both have great examples of people who have left legacies in our lives from, uh, our, our parents to our grandparents, you know, we've seen that we've been blessed tremendously. That's why it's so important for us to leave a blessing, you know? So, um, we would, we don't want to drop the baton at the end of the day. We want to keep yeah. that, that race going. Um, our biggest legacy is our legacy of faith. Um, when it comes down to entrepreneurship, our faith and entrepreneurship is hand in hand, just like our family. It's all three, you know, they all three work together. We have to have a vehicle to provide. That's our entrepreneurship. We have um, some, someone to provide for. That's our family. And we have something that keeps us going, something to look to, something to look forward to, and that's our faith. So all three of those play a huge part when it comes down to uh, our business, our family, leaving a legacy, all of that. Right now, what we're trying to do is just build up um, our, our, our empire, our little empire, if you will, um, our family and to be able to do just what our parents and grandparents have done for us, which is passed down not only that legacy of faith, um, believing that we can do anything, but also that legacy of hard work. You know, we, we, we have faith, but we believe enough and we work hard enough. Um, no, we work hard enough because we believe that it's possible. Hmm. That's good. And so kind of to, to go a little bit deeper on that. So, you know, we kind of touched on it earlier today or earlier in this, this conversation, but you know, there's, there's a lot of things going on in the whole world right now. You know, yeah. people are, people are being, uh, people are being let go, furloughed or laid off, whatever mm -hmm. ribbon you want to try and 
name it. Um, yeah. You know, and you know, even for for me, and I'm sure for you, business just isn't the same as it was a month ago, two months ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so, how can what kind of encouragement can we provide people who like you know? My heart is I want to leave. Like you know, I'm looking at you know someone who's looking at their children. You know, I want to leave something better for them than I had it. But mm-hmm. it's kind of hard to see, I guess, the the positive in everything that's going on. Uh, you know, what, what can we tell that person who wants, who desires to leave a legacy, but just doesn't know what their next step should be? Absolutely. Always. If you want to leave a legacy, but you don't know what your next step should be, go to your creator go to the person who gave you your purpose gave you the instructions of what you're supposed to do in this life right so Mm -hmm. once you do that and align like i said before earlier your gifts thing your desires and continue just one step at a time you will do that but you have to to know what you're trying to leave like i told you you have to have the goal and the vision in mind first Um, with us and our business and our family, our goal is to encourage marriages and change the lives of other creators. That's what we do. You know, we're wedding photographers. We want to encourage marriage. We want to, we want to encourage the start of the family. And from there, we want to change the lives of other creators. We want to help creators have a better life, get the freedom that they're out to receive or, you know, be able to express themselves however they want to. Um, So, that's our goal. That's our vision. That's the legacy we want to leave. And within the family, we want to just leave the, a legacy of faith. We want you, if, when I go, I want my kids to, without a shadow of a doubt, know that their father instilled in them their faith. That's it. That's the mm-hmm. best thing that I can do for my kids. So that's within the family. But it starts by knowing what's the legacy you want to leave. And once you know the legacy that you want to leave, you you should live every day with that in mind because it could be your last, right? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. when you're living every day like it's your last and you know the legacy that you want to leave and you're giving it your all and you're trusting God for that and to do that, there's nothing but good that can come from that, whether you're on this earth or not, you know? So that's what we're trying to do. That's what we do daily. Um, that's what we do for our clients. That's what we do for each other and our family. Um, so yeah, I think, if you want to leave that legacy, you, you got to make it plain and you got to live every day like it's your last. Yeah. You know, and I, I really like that because there is, you know, I guess we didn't really define what it means to leave a legacy. But, you know, I think for a lot of people may think that, you know, leaving a legacy, especially in the term, you know, from the entrepreneurship perspective, it is I need to leave a business for them where yeah, I need to yeah. leave a physical or a monetary inheritance for them to be able to go and start their own business or, or whatever. But, you know, to your point, when we leave, when you leave and, and it's, and it's just our children, what is, what is something that they're going to be able to have that is even bigger than just this physical thing? Absolutely. You know, because every we, time. Yeah. Cause we can hand them, we can hand them a business and then a global pandemic hits <laughs> and then, then, and, then yeah. what? and then what? Thanks. Thanks, mom and dad. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, I mean, the things that I've mentioned are so much bigger than a business. A, leaving a mm-hmm. business is great, but yeah. I would want to leave my kid with enough faith to know that he can run that business better than me. He can make it even better. He can make it bigger, you know? And so only things that I want to leave is, is the faith um, to know that Jesus is the source with everything. So, if you focus and, and stay focused on Jesus, you'll be okay at the, in the end, right? So I want that for sure. But then I also want them to just give them an opportunity. You know, at the end of the day, the only thing that somebody needs is an opportunity and, and the, 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 the faith and the confidence to know that they can do it. You know, a mentor is definitely helpful along the way because you're going to need some help. But so if you can have those three things, that's a good recipe for leaving a, 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 a lasting legacy on this earth. Mm, yeah, that's, that's super good, Josh. Yeah. I know that, you know, even, even just me, you know, I've, I've been in business for, uh, you know, two years now. Mm-hmm. And at first it was just about like, okay, I'm doing this. Let me just start, you know, putting my name out there and yeah, let me just yeah. start, you know, um, 
perfecting my craft education and, you know, networking and, you know, just the things that, you know, if you, when you Google how to how start, to start a, business. a business, yeah. <laughs> those things, get the no, business that, card, get your name. Yeah. Get, yeah. Yeah. Get your, get your website domain, you know, all these they things. They tell you all the practical steps, but they don't tell you <laughs> what's needed beforehand to continue through the practical steps when you Dang. hit hardships. Yeah, because you're going to hit good. hardships, but you have to be prepared to and know what you're going to do once you meet a hardship, right? Mm -hmm. It's fight, fight or flight. You can see even right now in today's environment with entrepreneurs and businesses, there are some businesses who are closing, who can't do anything. But then there's also entrepreneurs out here who are seeing this as an opportunity and in innovating and really uh, taking advantage of, you know, just their skill set or the opportunity that's out there to help and to serve people. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, like I mentioned before, you just need a little wisdom, uh, a mentor, maybe somebody who's seen this one or two times before and, and the, the faith and the confidence to go for it um, and an opportunity. And, you know, sometimes opportunities come out of nowhere and sometimes they're given. So uh, yeah, I think that if you can just focus on that, you'll be okay. Yeah, man, that's, that's so good. You know, and I, Jeez, you know, there's, I, th I think the most successful, I, I mean, I don't have any research to back this up, but mm -hmm. it's, it's <laughs> I'm claiming it. And I, I think it's true. I think the most successful businesses or, or products or services that, that are launched are those that are filling a need that, that people, that people are desiring. You know, Absolutely. I know that now it's never going, I mean, I, I won't say never, but if you're looking to go into business, fulfill a need first, yeah. right? Solve mm -hmm. a problem. You'll get your reward is in relation to the, pro the size of the problem that you solve. Mm. So go for the biggest problem that you think you can solve, comp you know, and go for it. You know, yeah. something that you want to solve something, it could be something that you love or it could be something that you just hate, you know, mm -hmm. but whatever it is, you're going to need some fire behind it to keep going. Yeah. 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 And that's, that's what I like to call that's passion. Big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's really it. You know, I think, uh, you know, there's this, there's this list that's been going around on, on social media talking about, you know, the, the top businesses that were launched during the last recession, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, or, yeah, you know, 2008 to 2010. And it was things yeah. like Uber, like Airbnb. Yeah. Uh, the world you know, has been other, coming this way for a, mm -hmm. a while now. Yeah. A while yeah. now. And you should start looking at where it's going next. Mm -hmm. Because just right when people start getting comfortable and settled in, it's going to change. That's yep. it. The world is nothing but change. So continue mm -hmm. to change with it. Continue to be flexible and don't get too stuck in your ways. You're going to have to evolve, evolve or die. Yeah. Which the quote comfort is the enemy of progress. That's it. Don't get too comfortable. <laughs> yeah. Man. You get comfortable. You get, you, you know, and I don't say get, that because you don't want to get, you don't want to plateau. You, you always, even yourself, you want to continue mm -hmm. to develop. You want to continue to grow. If you're not doing that, you're stagnant, you're dead, you know, mm -hmm. if there's no growth going on, what are you doing? You know? So you don't want to, you want to be better than you were yesterday. Yeah. Yeah. If you're always better than you were yesterday, then you'll, yeah, you're somewhere. always, you're always improving. Yeah. Growth is, growth is such a huge thing. And, you know, and I, I think if us as individual entrepreneurs are striving to grow, and we've already established that legacy is more than just a physical product or service or business. Then if, if I am growing and growing into the legacy that I want to leave mm -hmm. and the people around me, like we're, we're taking those people with us, whether oh, it's, yeah. whether it's our wives, whether it's your children, whether it's just your, you know, your, your immediate network. Mm -hmm. yeah. If I am growing and, and with the perspective of, this is bigger than me. Life is bigger than me. And I want to leave mm -hmm. it better than it was for me. Mm -hmm. Everybody around you is going, everybody eats. <laughs> everybody people, people eats gonna go. Me everybody at eats. the end of the day. That's right. And, but, <laughs> but guess what? If you eat and you're working too, you're pulling your weight. Yeah. Nobody gets a free plate, but everybody going to eat. And I'm not eating until everybody else does. Yeah. That's big. That's big. What's that? Um, yeah. That, you know, it's kind of like when you, uh, when you, when you, when you fly on an airplane and put on your own mask first, yeah, put on your own mask before you, uh, yeah, that's good. So and I've, I've had to learn that in entrepreneurship too, sometimes. Mm -hmm. So it's okay sometimes to, you know, make sure that you're taken care of so you can take care of others. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you know, you know, good to everybody or, you know, people are gonna, and I, I see this a lot where, you know, people, 
people go and take off and then they leave you behind because yeah oh yeah oh yeah yeah we're just, we can still be dead weight so something that you've you've, you've brought up a lot is is, is mentorship mm-hmm. and i think you know going back and answering your question of you know if you are visionless or mm-hmm. if you are if you feel purposeless what can you do what practical actionable thing can you do to to help get you um in the right mind to 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 establish a vision and to find your purpose not just as an entrepreneur but as an individual person as a human yeah. being yeah. as a child of god um i think mentorship is a big thing and i will admit that i have had multiple mentors <laughs> mm-hmm. i have Which is okay i have I, yeah i try to have a mentor or somebody who i can call in in every area of my life right mm-hmm. whether yeah. it be for marriage parenting business um man whatever it is and just in any area it's always good to have somebody you can ping or somebody you can ask a question to or you know mm-hmm. i've learned that a little bit later in my life i'm kind yeah. of a lone ranger in a sense but i've learned how it, vital and how important and how rewarding you know having a mentor really can be it it, mm-hmm. it helps you there's no point in finding out all the mistakes and errors yourself you know you can learn from others it's better to learn from others you'll get to where you want to go a lot quicker hearing yeah. about somebody else's mistakes or how somebody else avoided a pitfall right mm-hmm. um, so mentors yeah. can don't and mentors don't always have to be people um mm. some of <laughs> books are amazing that's, you know? yeah, that's true. <laughs> you, people spend so much time writing books of their life and all of mm-hmm. that you can get 40 years of wisdom in a day you know use them it's probably if i wrote a book and a, like a lot of authors i plan on writing a book someday but i would put my most valuable jewels in there to pass down you know so go read a book, find somebody who you <laughs> admire, <laughs> find somebody who you admire, somebody you respect and listen to their story. You know, mm-hmm. they, what happened here? What made you do this? Why did you want to do that? They give those away for free in the book. Yeah. So yeah, go read, go read. And books are super cheap. If not free, in most yeah. places, <laughs> get you a library card, visit your local library. Yep. Uh, well, not, now because yeah not now cool. staying at home and, you know, <laughs> but yeah um or you know you could you can buy some online i hear podcasts are a uh, podcasts are, are amazing <laughs> it's the <laughs> the 21st century book of course yeah podcast audiobooks yeah there's there's so much there's so much out there and you know you know something that you so i'm i'm also the type of person where you know because you know you're one of the you're one of the mentors that has helped me you know just really like if it's if it's not a part of the vision, if it's not fulfilling your purpose, then maybe you don't need to be doing it. What are you doing? And so, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person where it's like, okay, I don't want to do something unless it's going to help me grow. And yeah. so, but that mindset also prevents me sometimes from jumping in because I'm like, ah, I don't know if that, I don't know if that's the thing. Uh, but, you know, kind of to your point, like, you know, you're learning these things later on in life. Mm-hmm. And I think learning things later on in life is even better than just never experiencing and learning these things Absolutely. at all. Even even making the wrong decisions at times is beneficial to. It's a lesson, a, a hard yeah. one that you won't forget. You know, those. <laughs> yeah. It's like a good whooping. I don't know if you got whoopings <laughs> as a child, but I still remember a couple of these whoopings, and I promise uh-huh. you, I just won't do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it taught me a lesson, and life can do the exact same thing. Whether it hits you hard financially, whether it hits you hard emotionally, life will teach you some good lessons if you pay attention. And if you want to get better, because then you'll be paying attention. So you won't make those same mistakes again. Yep. Yep. Mm-hmm. And you're going to tell somebody else, hey, don't do that. <laughs> don't. Do, yeah. I mean, I will, I will, I'm going to try. I, yeah. You're going to learn on your own. You know, mm-hmm. my son, I would tell him, don't touch that. That's hot. That's fire. That's hot. That's hot. But, you know, sometimes it takes burning you know, yourself to realize. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yep. I've, I've gone through that. I've put my hand on the stove and it was on and yeah. <laughs> never again. Yeah. But you learn, you learn. Yeah. So that's good. That's good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, when it comes down to, just like you said, de- when deciding what to do, what to my number one goal, my purpose, my calling on earth here is to build the kingdom, mm-hmm. to do my part in building the kingdom, taking my gifts, my desires, 
to build the kingdom of God. And so everything that I do, I try to funnel through those lenses, right? If it's mm -hmm. a business opportunity, how can I build the kingdom? With, or where, how, you know, at the end of the day, all of my efforts need to be directed back to eternity because at the end of the day, that's all we got. Everything that yeah. we do here on earth, only the things that we do for eternity will last. So yeah, my family, good. my business, everything. And I'm not perfect, but I'm saying when it comes down to making those decisions, when it comes down to creating what you want your life to look like, mm -hmm. that's where I start. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's super good. What are, and you know, we're kind of at the, at the end of this, but mm -hmm. I, I, I want to know even just some, and an, so just some super practical things. What are maybe two or three practical things that if like, you know, you're inspired by listening to Joshua Ferris on this podcast, talking about vision, leaving a legacy and family and, you know, purpose, like all these things, what are two or mm -hmm. three things that once this podcast ends, I, someone who's listening or someone who's watching can, can go and do in like the next 10 minutes. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So if you're trying to do all those things, first things I always tell everybody is get to know your creator. Your mm -hmm. creator has the answers to all of those things, what you should be doing with your life, what right or left, whatever it means. Find your creator. Your creator already has all of those things lined out for you. After you do that, then it's get to understand, get to know yourself a little bit more. What are some mm -hmm. things that you like to do? Write down if just if money, if time, just what would you want to do? What would really make you happy? And then once you do that, um, that's when you get really practical and start looking at the what's the very next step to make that happen. After you find out your purpose and your calling, there's a book called um, Called to a Purpose by Tony Evans. I read that book. I still read that book every day, every morning. Um, and it's a short, small devotion that helps you get your mindset into the right framework of following the purpose God has for you, your destiny. What is it? So every morning I would read that it would put my, it would shift my mindset into focusing on what my, my purpose is. And then from there, it's like, okay, well, I know I got to go to work. I know I got to uh, take care of my kids, uh, my family, my wife. I know I have to be a husband and you start prioritizing those things and um, you'll see the next steps that you need to take. So, um, for instance, give me an example. I'll just, let's do a live example of somebody trying to do what? Okay. Uh, let's say you have a, oh man, that's tough. Okay. Let's say you are a single mother of three mm -hmm. and you, you are good with your hands. You, um, you can, you can craft something or you can build stuff. And yeah. Okay. So just an idea, single mother of three, who's good with her hands. Um, first and foremost, my first question is, how can you become a part of the body and put those that energy in your work towards building the kingdom? So one is your family. You're a single mother of three. God has put you responsible over those three children. So first, let's show those three kids what a godly mother uh woman is to act like and, and if you're with your hands and crafts it could be as easily as starting uh let's doing crafts with the kids getting them involved maybe doing crafts to teach the kids about god or even doing the crafts and getting your kids involved to either sell you know whatever it may be with little accessories or anything of that nature that's where i would start i'm not saying that's the end vision the end vision could be now you have a whole company that makes these crafts for kids and or makes them for whatever it may be but I would start everything starts in the home mm -hmm. everything starts in mm -hmm. the home so whatever I want to put out in the mass I start with my kids you know I start with my wife it has to start at home so if you're looking to where to start start at home do the little things if you want to lead a company lead your family first mm -hmm. lead your wife yeah. you know if you can't lead your wife or your kids it's going to be a hard time leading a fortune 500 company. Um, it's going to be a hard time leading five yeah. people, you know? Yeah. So your home is the training grounds is the battlegrounds to mm -hmm. where you uh, build your skills. You know, look, look at musicians. Where did a lot of these musicians start? They started in the church, right? Mm -hmm. They started singing in church. They, they, they got better. And then they eventually took it out to the masses outside of the four walls. But um, I think it's the same kind of thing with, you know, 
uh, when it comes to the family. It starts at home. So whatever you're thinking you want to do in the world, start it first in your home. Yeah, that's good. And that's, and that's more than just talking about it. Oh, but yeah, because they're going to tell you the truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're the real market. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's good. And then it even really puts into perspective on like, okay, is this something that I want to continue to do? Mm -hmm. Because absolutely, yeah. If it's taking time away from your wife or husband or or you know your your children, then that's something to consider. Because if this does, if this thing does scale and it grows, Mm -hmm. it's going to take even more time away. So, or it may take even more time, or it may you may have to you may need to get help from them. You know, Mm -hmm. that's true. So you don't want them to. Hire your children. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> but you don't. What you don't want is them to. Uh, you don't want them to be upset or not want anything to do with all of that because yeah. you've placed that above them. You don't yeah. want them to resent. Resent. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. That's 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 true. Yeah, and I and I think if you have, you know, truly thought this thing out, you know, you've truly included created a vision. Yeah, yeah. Then they are included in that. Yep. They and have if, to. Be. And if, if your family is resenting your business product or service, then you need to go back to the drawing board. Get them involved, get them on board. Well, Josh, this was very good conversation. I think there's yeah, a lot yeah. of things that people can really take. I'm taking away, I'm, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've, we've kind of, this is a question that I, I want to ask everybody that I interview on the podcast. And, and our, our whole topic has kind of been around this, but I still want to ask you, mm-hmm. what is the legacy that you want to leave? Absolutely. Um, to my family, I want to leave a legacy of faith. I want them, I want, I want my story to be one of what's possible when you believe God for his word and when you back it up with hard work, right? Mm-hmm. Like I said earlier, I, I work as hard as I do because I have as much faith as I do. Mm -hmm. So with all of the visions and the, the things that God has, what I believe he has said is for me and what he said is possible. I'm working just as much as I'm working as hard as I believe that is possible. So I want to leave a legacy of of faith and hard work to my family, um, to those who we do business with. I want to encourage them in not only their faith, but their marriages um, in their business. And I want, and, and everybody who we come across, I want to impact and change their life in a certain way. Right. And whether it be, uh, giving them some hope, whether it is giving them some wisdom, um, or the tangible assets that we give to bit people, whether it be the photos, videos, um, strategies, um, education, I want that to impact them positively in, mm-hmm. in, in their life and in their business so that they can experience the same freedom that I've experienced from Jesus Christ. So at the end of the day, it all goes back to that. Yeah, that's very good. That's very good. So for people who, who want to, who want to reach out to you, who want to see some of your work or even want to connect for, uh, you know, some, um, some mentorship, how, where, where can people find you? How can people connect with you? Yeah, we're on Instagram. Our website is ferrisphotos.com ferrisfilms.com both of those with a ph um and then we try to keep the you know ferris yeah i see see Uh, see (laughs) so yeah you can you can get uh ferrisphotos.com ferrisfilms.com and on there you can inquire about uh any family sessions any uh weddings special events um or if you have a business and need any help marketing that business getting your message out um putting your product service or business in the best light we can help you with that as well. And if you're a photographer, videographer, creative entrepreneur who is looking to grow their business, um, we do offer uh, coaching sessions and we have programs to help photographers really, really scale and grow their business. So if you are ever interested in talking about that or even just talking a little bit about how to uh, shape up your business, um, how to put some goals in place, we'd love to help you there. And you can go to ferrisphotos.com Uh, send an inquiry in there for a coaching session and the team will respond to you immediately. Cool. Very cool. Joshua Ferris, thank you so much for joining me on the podcast. I mean, I appreciate the invitation, man. It's always fun. It's always, yeah. I love, (laughs) I've I've loved seeing your growth. I love seeing you getting to do different things. I remember when we first started and so (laughs) 
here being seeing this from what we when we first started oh, is man. amazing man. It's great. It's yeah. Really great. I was definitely uh somebody who didn't have I just I had a camera and I went to do something with it. <laughs> hey man, that that's great. And that's how me and Care started. I yeah. tell everybody this is like the results of two cameras and a lot of faith, right? Yeah, you know, that's we good. We didn't have all yeah. the extra stuff. We just had our camera, well, just my one camera that I bought out of a pawn shop. But <laughs> hey, look, you know, that's all that's where it starts. Yeah, yeah, that's good. And you know, even with that, I feel like that's such a good illustration to like it's not about what you have. It's about, you know, I'm going to make it work with, with yeah. anything, you know, that's it. That's it. whether it's, you know, for, you know, for, for you, whether it's a, a $10,000 camera because those exist or a $150 yeah. camera, which is what I started on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if, whatever you have, if you have that and some faith, then you're going to move some mountains and you're going to make things happen. Absolutely. I always like to say the best time to have planted a huge tree was 20 years ago. If <laughs> yeah. you didn't do it then, the best time is right now. So mm -hmm. start with what you have, uh, put that faith to work and, and, and keep going, keep yeah. going. It's 20 years from now, you're gonna thank your past self. Yeah, man, it's crazy. You, Cause we, we, me and Karis were talking about, I know we're trying to wrap up here, but we were talking <laughs> about uh, there, you know, most people over exaggerate what they can do in a year, hmm. but grossly under exaggerate what they can do in 10. Wow. You know, so just think about that. You know, when 2020 hit, I was like, okay, I need to start going for 20 or 2020, 20, 20, 30. What's 20, you know what I mean? We can talk mm -hmm. about 2021. That's cool and all, but really stretch it out, you know, and, and that's an exercise. That's a training. You have to train your brain and your, and, and your, your thought process to really think that far in advance and mm -hmm. to re reverse engineer how to get yeah. there. So yeah. we're going into productivity and goals and stuff now, but yeah, that's what you really got to do. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. You know, it's, it's, it's funny. Cause uh, <laughs> yesterday, uh, my wife, she, uh, we did a, you know, since we're all shelter in place or whatever mm -hmm. we did, a we did an at home exercise. I, I don't know if she got it off of YouTube or what, but it was like 30 minutes and it was like some hip hop workout. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, if you know me, you know, like, I go to a lot of weddings, so, you know, I can do the Cupid shuffle, yeah, you, know, yeah. you, know, you know, those ones, because they tell you what to do, right? But this day, I mean, they had, a, he had us doing some, some, some dance, you know, some things. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is not for me, you know, I was, and I was getting frustrated. Yeah. And well, my wife was, you know, she was doing just fine, you know, but for her, you know, this was not her first time doing it, but for me, it was. And so I could have easily just quit after the first one, I don't want to do it again, yeah. but she's like, Hey, you know, I've been doing this for a little bit. Like it's going to get easier. You're going to know better, these things. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think that's such a good example, you know, just, just seeing to business, like it's not just, you know, today may be a failure today may be terrible, but if you keep doing it yep. in 20 years in 10 years in five years, by the end of the year, it's going to, it's going to be a lot better. It's going to make more that's sense. Amazing. You'll be more focused. You'll have a little bit more of experience behind you, just a little bit more confidence. Yep. And if you have those things and some faith, you're going to do Absolutely. just fine. Look at it. If you're still breathing, you probably got through the worst thing in your life. You can make yeah. it to the next, you know. That's so true. Just keep going. That's just true. keep going. That's true. Okay, let's stop. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that was, that was super good, Josh. Thank you. Thank good. you so much, man. I think good. this is really, you know, this is really defining, you know, just what, what this podcast is going to be about and, and good, people good. Who, who are going to be listening and watching. And I trust and hope that a lot of people take a lot from, from this and their conversation, even reach out to you for some mentorship, because yeah, be cool. this is, this is a taste of what our one-on-one -on -one sessions have been like. Yeah, so, every time, every time start yeah. off with where are you at? How's the family? Because like, if you're not good there, you can do all this stuff. But when you go back, it's just going to implode. It's not going to be good. Trust me. Trust me. Trust yeah. me. <laughs> handle trust home. Yeah. yeah. Handle home cool. first. And let it let everything grow from there. Yeah. Super good. So uh thank you everybody for listening and, and or watching, however you're viewing or absorbing this this content from the Culture Legacy podcast. Uh, I hope that you really took a lot from this. Reach out to Josh. Um, if you are in need of direction, if you need a mentor, you know, I Josh is even good at helping you or help he, helping people direct them to who they need, you know, whether he's the one for you or not, not to take business away from him, but I trust no, no, that, you, no, you know, yeah, yeah. I've, 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 I've been with Josh for to a bit to know his, his heart. And so I know that, you know, if he's not the one for you, he'll help point you in a direction of where he wants you to go because it's not about business. Uh, it's not about, 
you know, just physical status, but um, it's about for him, it's, you know, it's really about keeping eternity in mind. And so um, the advice, helping you experience the freedom that you're looking for at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that transcends beyond business and your specific, uh, what's the word, your specific category, your specific uh, platform. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you again, Josh. Um, tell Karis and the little ones, thank you for, <laughs> <Absolutely>. <laughs> for letting you, for, you know, quiet for, a bar you for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Thank you very much for everybody who's listening and watching. Uh, you know, subscribe, do all those things so that you know when the next ones are, are coming out. And thank you again for tuning in with us. Absolutely. Thank you for all you're doing, Matthew. Thanks, man. Yeah, appreciate it.